Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So we have some XRP related news. We have some Bitcoin news, Cardano, Solana. Let's begin here. All right. So, of course, the bank for <laughs> the bank for international settlements wastes no time. They saw the big move Ripple made, um, which has many implications. All right. And we're going to discuss a few. Because now the Bank for International Settlements wants to roll out a paper. They released a paper, I suppose, a report. An article says this BIS publishes new stable coin report following Ripple's announcement. Of course, because first of all, let's let's just be clear. Ripple has a huge advantage, number one, and can dominate the stable coin market. Number one, I haven't forget. I know I keep saying number one. It is what it is. <laughs> number one, no one has forgotten. Uh, Coinbase and USDC and Circles fiasco when they, you know, when when USDC got frozen, um, no one has forgotten all the different issues, tether faces and, you know, that there's that Ripple can dominate. Now, hold on. When it comes to stable coins, let's let's clear something up. They're supposed to back a stable coin with something. Sometimes it's cash reserves. Sometimes it's other things like what tether does. Um, but of course, you want transparency. Now, Ripple is sitting on a whole lot of XRP. I asked this question and and they use XRP in any way that they want, just like any anyone else. Right. They can liquidate it for anything. Why? Why wouldn't they back their USDC with the liquidity of XRP, even if XRP was the last um, bastion of hope? If there was a, a threat of a deep egg, um, even if it was something just to act as a cushion layer on the capital that they have. They could do that. They could back their um, their stable coin, whatever they're going to call it. I don't know what they're going to call it, but I'm just playing with ideas here. But they could back their stable coin with the liquidity of XRP. They can liquidate XRP anytime they want, which means what? That they don't have the same problems other stable coins have. And this is what BIS is alluding to, you know, uh, as far as problems with stable coins. Oh, they can be depegged as though the dollar isn't highly volatile, which it is highly volatile. You see the times when it's down, gold is up. Um, everything else is highly vol volatile with its uh, its rates going up and down, up and down, you know, Um and then as far as if you're talking about T-bills or bonds, everything is super volatile right now. But they like to only highlight crypto. You know, just pay attention to that. But anyway, and they highlight crypto because they want to control crypto. They have to keep that pessimism out there. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't see them facing the same problems that other stablecoin issuers uh, will face. And not only that, I see it. If they're looking at it the way I'm looking at it, it could bring a lot of extra utility to XRP, not that XRP needs it, um, but sure, XRP can be used to maintain a stable coin peg. So they would like this is why I believe and I could be wrong. This is why I believe Brad Garlinghouse himself said that it's just complimentary to XRP. A stable coin is complimentary. Anything that they add is complimentary to XRP and XRP XRPL. Correct me if I'm wrong. The man doesn't have a stable coin tattoo. He has an XRP tattoo. A stable coin doesn't bring in the big money, but XRP can bring in the big money, right? It can skyrocket just like any other crypto can skyrocket. If it's played the right way, they know that. But anyway, I'm looking at it in that way. It says here, the paper mentioned several risks that stable coins, pe uh, uh, stable coins pose to their holders, which include possible instances of depegging. I already went down that. Listen, First of all, they couldn't even uh, this was a while ago. I don't know what they do now, but they couldn't even look into what Tether actually actually had. They had to go by their word. So you're just telling me what you have. We, we can't actually see it. That was then. I don't know if they 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 have clarity now. I'm not sure. Um, USDC doesn't even matter because there was a bank run on USDC when all those banks went down and certain things were happening. There was a bank run on USDC. They had to freeze it. So does it really matter if it depegs or not? If you have to take that measure and I'll tell you what, I'll never trust USDC again. That's just the way that it is. Now, if there was something going on, some kind of financial catastrophe and you really needed a, a secure stable coin. Once again, Ripple is already saying, hey, we're going to back the stable coin with a lot of different things, right? A lot of diff different financial assets and instruments. Why would XRP not be in there? I just don't understand it. They're sitting on a lot of it. And then once again, that brings a new dimension to XRP. 
Actually, you can have that stable coin flow right through an ocean of XRP to maintain liquidity. Like, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you know better, right? Um, but I'm just thinking about that, like on demand liquidity. Is it can you? I mean, I don't think that only applies to just XRP transactions. I think you use that in a multitude of ways. I do, um, especially with um, wrapping things and certain measures of interoperability. I don't see why you couldn't ram certain things right through an ocean of XRP to maintain liquidity at all times. Sort of like um, what quant, uh, not quant, my apologies, what Flare does with what they call over collateralization. Right. So they're making sure there's excessive amounts of money, money, um, value on the chain so that there's always enough liquidity. They call it over collateralization. I don't see why you couldn't do something like that here. They're the ones building it. Right. Just make it completely compatible with on demand liquidity or XRP, XRP based systems where it can tap into that somehow. I don't have all the semantics, but I'm just thinking. Um, and but see the way that. Flare is going about that. If I'm to understand this correctly, this is why they have both Flare that you can stake and you can um, delegate, but you also have Songbird that you can stake and delegate. Now, what people don't talk about a lot, and once again, correct me if I'm wrong, Songbird adds to the liquidity of Flare Network overall. So this lends to the over collateralization right, aspect where there's always enough liquidity. I believe that's how it works. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it says standard setting bodies around the world are currently working on a regulatory framework that would address the rapid rise of stable coins. What they want to do. Here's the thing. Have you not seen us dominating dominating? They don't like it that Coinbase was out front with stable coins, right? Tether was out front with stable coins. Now Ripple. Wait. Who's the legacy system actor here when it comes to stable coins? Because they all seem to love stable coins. They all seem to want stable coins, but they're, they're so far behind. They haven't been able to get out to the forefront with stable coins. That's what they don't like. Right. But it's a good sign to us because it shows we're dominating every possible way. We dominate when it comes to interoperability. One, we dominate when it comes to global reach. They don't have global reach. FedNow does not have global reach. Uh, Swift does not have global reach. Most of the world doesn't even want to use their systems. Watch that members only video I released last night. Watch that video. I'm telling you where we're heading. They only can move forward. The legacy system that is. They only can move forward through us. It's just a matter of when, not if. Right. They're limiting themselves. They're isolating themselves from the rest of the world. Who's going to use their system? Once again, watch that members only video I released. Watch what that person says. And then on top of that, later in this video, I have another article. It's going to show you even further where things are going. This is big stuff, folks. The world is changing right before our, our eyes and we're involved in it. Let's move on here to another article. OK, so now this next article here. Oh, we got it. We, we're getting to a little bit of Bitcoin news here. So. This article is titled Analyst Unveils Colossal Bitcoin Price Target as Bitcoin Stays Close to $70,000 Before the Halving. I think we've covered a lot of aspects of the halving um, extensively here, but we're going to get to something in a moment that I really want to highlight. It says a widely followed crypto strategist thinks Bitcoin's current strength will push Bitcoin to a price level that exceeds people's expectations this cycle. Once again, I definitely think that that is possible. This is coming from Michael Van de Pop. We've heard from him before. It says, um, it says he tells people on X that Bitcoin managing to print a new all time high above seventy three thousand dollars before halving when miners rewards are slashed in half is a solid signal of strength. Yes. But once again, I want to iterate. I expect tons of volatility to come before the halving, even though it's very near and tons of volatility after this is a money making season. There's not going to be a lot of unless it's institutions. Retail is not going to do a lot of holding. Not at all. Expect rapid rises and rapid dips like what you've seen. Expect more of the same. The system, the um, the market is telling you what's coming. It's showing you the pattern every day. 
It says, according to believe what you see sometimes with your own eyes, your own ears are hearing and seeing. You are watching the charts. You are seeing what's going on. That's going to repeat. And as a matter of fact, if we're going to expect things to go higher, the rubber band goes equally both ways. The pendulum swings equally to the left as it does to the right. So if it's going to go up high, expect it to go low equally as dramatically, if that makes any sense. Right. So according to the crypto trader, he sees Bitcoin generating more than four X gains from current levels before witnessing the cycle top. If that's if that's the case, that would be amazing because everything else will skyrocket also. And I definitely want that to happen. It says, quote, Bitcoin still facing crucial resistance. If this breaks, then we'll see a continuation towards new all time highs. Bitcoin is seventy thousand dollars pre halving, likely three hundred thousand this cycle. That's the most bullish prediction I've heard in the last two weeks. Almost all the other articles I've been seeing. I don't know what you've you've seen. What I've been seeing have come down to my levels. I'm telling you, I've been saying one hundred thousand dollars. Right. Safe numbers. Eighty thousand to eighty five thousand safe numbers. And it looks like. It might blow past that. Given what I've seen, I think it could blow past that. But $100,000 is what I'm thinking. I've been saying that since the beginning of the year. And a lot of others have brought theirs down to $100,000. And you're going to see one here. I believe we have somebody that said 150. Was it yesterday? Or maybe I have that article today. Oh, no, it's today. It's the next article here. But it says likely $300,000 this cycle. I would love for it to go past $100,000. Let me make that really clear. I want it to go there. That would be beautiful. Listen, I want Bitcoin to go absolutely insane like what I've seen gold do. Right. Um, so let's leave that there. Let's move on here. We got, we have actually a, a, quite a few Bitcoin articles today. So now you got to understand, like I forget what articles I have lined up. I have so many. Sometimes I might have 30 artic articles and then I have to choose out of that 30, which like maybe six, seven, eight or 10. Um, that I'm going to do in the video. I've, and, and so I'm just going through and I'm eliminating. I'm trying to choose which ones I think are most relevant and powerful. Uh, so anyway, this article here is titled with 10 days to the halving analysts predict one hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin top. Listen, I like I said, I hope it goes past one hundred and fifty, but it's no doubt in my mind that after it reaches a height, a, a great height, it will, will probably have a great correction. I, I'm, I'm pretty solid on I'm, I'm, I'm pretty set on that. There will be a great correction. But here's the thing. That great correction. I think that's what um, institutions are waiting for. They're waiting for a massive dip. Every and remember, everything will go down at that time. When Bitcoin goes down, takes that correction. Everything will go down. And I think institutions are looking at that. This is why one reason why. Bitcoin is still, you know, hovering around what's it was that 70,000, 71,000, something like that. I don't know what it is today. I didn't even check the charts. But uh, listen, most of the uh, most of the institutional money and retail money is still on the side. It hasn't stepped in yet, not majorly like it could. Pay attention to how much they've been buying. They could buy much more, much quick, much more quickly. But why haven't they? There's a reason for everything. They haven't yet because they don't want things just yet. To go off, they want to wait and see. It's my humble opinion. You could disagree. They want to wait and see how low it can go when it does have a massive correction. Because when listen, when it hits astronomical prices, the greed is going to kick in. People are going to sell. Expect it. Psychologically, prepare yourself if you're not already. I know a lot of you. Most of you are strong, so you don't. You're not even going to worry about it. But when it goes down. They're going to look at it as a buying opportunity. Wait, actually, we read an article. It was either yesterday or the day before where they admitted that they look at that as a buying opportunity. Like when things go down. Also, check the members only section. Right? I've been showing some things there. Um, so this will be no different if they're telling you they look at things crashing as a buying opportunity and that they want that to happen and that they actually sat out this. They, they literally said this. That they sat out. Well, a lot of you read the article, right? You, you read it. Um, they sat out a lot of those highs and, you know, where everybody else was salivating and they want to buy, buy, buy. And, you know, oh, man, the bull run is fully in. And I'm, I was saying the whole time, hey, no, this is just the beginning. We haven't seen anything yet. And I stand by that. But they told you, hey, we sat that out. Yeah. While everybody else was ce celebrating, we sat that out. So what are they waiting for? Right. Okay. So 
let's say it goes to hundred thousand. Heck, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past eighty five thousand. Boom, major correction. I wouldn't put it past that. But I'm getting to something. Goes up high. Boom, major correction. Institutions go absolutely insane. We also read an article that was saying that there's institutions that didn't get in and they, they're they looking to get in now, which now could mean the next few months. Who knows when that's going to be? We'll, we'll try to keep up to date with that. But that could, after a major correction, there could be a massive skyrocket. I think that is what might catch people off guard. I think they'll let it plummet let it consolidate for a little bit, there will be a lot of fear in retail, that is. And then, boom, it might just take off like a rocket. It's just that's what, that's what I believe. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to go that way. Um, let's, let's scroll down here, read this little tidbit. It says, with only 10 days left until the much-awaited halving, Bitcoin is still trading above the $70,000 psychological level, bolstering bullish long-term price predictions from market analysis. Uh, analyst following the halving bitcoin price could appreciate over 160 percent to reach a cycle top of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, according to a research report by bitfinex analysts shared by coin uh, with coin telegraph quote using a straightforward regression model we predict a 160 percent post halving price surge in the next 14 months which is you know that that kind of goes along with other things that we've read you know, uh, taking the price to between one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to one hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars. This has huge implications for the rest of crypto. This is why everybody should be watching what the heck Bitcoin is doing. In my humble opinion, XRP will go up. XL, you, you've seen this already. XRP will go up because of that. Um, XLM will go up because of that. Everything will benefit to its different degrees. Right. Um Micro caps might go ballistic and I'm ready for it, by the way. I'm, I've been prepared. I'm prepared. Micro caps might go insane. Right. Um, it says Bitcoin fell 2.2 percent in the 24 hours. OK, let's move on to another article here. I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying my best to squeeze, the, <laughs> squeeze these articles. And it's diff difficult when you have a lot of thoughts now. OK, so so, OK, we have an article here that actually he may be saying something similar to what I was just trying to iterate. This article is from Cointelegraph is titled Bitcoin halving uh, to fuel raging fire cell of crypto assets. Arthur Hayes. Yes, but I've been saying this for a while. Um, I think a lot anybody who's been in crypto for a while or been in a stock market or anything where you, you're going to be making a large gain knows that there's a massive selling event coming. Look, if you if you're in a commodities market, you can you can just see this very easily with gold, platinum, palladium. Anytime you get this big spike, you see it go up, everybody's celebrating and then boom, it starts going down. It's like, hey, if you're going to take profit, you better take profit quickly. It's going to happen quickly. Um this always happens like and and it even happens before like some news might go mainstream. So the news will hit all of us researchers first and hardcore people like I, I, the hardcore people, the people that just like they just read stuff just just because they're interested. Right. Um, the price will plummet because everybody will start selling. They want to bring the price down. Right. They want to FUD everybody out. They will bring that price down. There'll be massive selling Then All of a sudden, the news, the good news will hit mainstream. Then the price will go boom. Right. Um I was going to say something about a certain commodity that's um, there's a commodity. I'm just going to say this. That's getting interesting. Did you see it? I'm not going to put that out there. I'm going to hold that information. But there's I'm just I'm saying there is a commodity. That's in crisis. I'll leave that there. Right. <laughs> if you want to go look that, I'm telling you, it says cryptocurrencies are headed for inter uh, intense turbulence. In the second half of April, spurred by the Bitcoin halving and a Fed, quote, bag of tricks, unquote, says BitMEX co-founder. I, I think I thought we read something like this um, the other day. It says in April 8th blog post, Hayes wrote he believed the Bitcoin halving would pump prices in the medium term. I, did we read this article before, like yesterday? Maybe they rephrased it because I don't remember this. Um the the way that they're they're writing the title oh no it's not the it's not the article it says quote good could the market defy my bearish inclinations and continue higher yeah well he says an expletive i'm not going to read he says 
quote, I'm perennially, perennially long on crypto. Why is this? I mean, everybody does their own thing, but I really don't need to read all your curse words. I really don't. Just my this is just my way, you know, like I don't know what you're trying to convey uh, with that energy, like to each his own. But you want us to read this. You want a lot of people to, to take in your your knowledge. Anyway, this is Hayes noted the se second half of April will be a, quote, precarious period for risky assets, unquote, as U.S. tax payments remove liquidity. The Fed starts quantitative tightening, decreasing the money supply. <laughs> right. And the Treasury's general account, basically the government's checking account, is yet to be used, Hayes wrote. The bank term funding program ended a few weeks ago, but no U.S. non-too-big-to-fail banks have subsequently faced any real stress. What? My good, my word. I have to respectfully disagree. Respectfully disagree. You see, I guess you're going by on the spot stress, but what is building? What is building as far as their commercial real estate problems that they're scrambling to resolve and they haven't been able to? You don't consider that stress? Okay. What about their unrealized losses? You don't consider that stress that they're scrambling to try to resolve that? Okay. I mean, I don't know what to say to you. Um, they've been having record amounts of deposit flight. Everybody's pulling their money out of banks. I even heard a person recently say in a video, they're stacking money in boxes in their house. Even though that's, that's very dangerous. You, that person definitely hasn't listened to the notorious B.I.G. Kicking the door, waving the 4-4. Four -four. All you heard was Papa, don't hit me no more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't recommend keeping large amounts of cash in one's home unless you, you know, what you think all the guns is for, <laughs> like, you know, unless you're ready to protect it. <laughs> but anyway, massive deposit flight is what I'm saying. You don't think that's a problem that they're losing customers to everything else, everything. Hey, listen, there's a reason why gold and, and, and I'm, listen, it's not even gold from like at Mex or something. People are buying gold bars from Costco. Silver from anywhere they can get it. You don't think that's a problem for the banks? That's not stress? I beg to differ. Uh, these are all facts. Anyone can look them up. But, you know, okay, so he's saying that he believes there could be a massive plummet in Bitcoin's price afterwards. Yes, I believe before the, before the halving is possible, all those 10 days away, we've seen the volatility. And then after, sure, 100%, there could be a massive sell-off. There's going to be massive profit-taking. Matter of fact, I think that that's closer to being a reality. Although, once again, pendulum swings equally to the left as it does to the right. I think when it goes down, the institutions, no, retail has sold almost all that they can sell. Uh, we've even heard long-term holders of Bitcoin selling in mass. Right. Wallets waking up out of nowhere selling. Right. You read those articles. So institutions will look at it as this is another uh, chance for us to dominate a little bit more and buy at a lower price. And then they will pump that to the moon like people couldn't even believe this is still the beginning. Even after the halving. I still consider it the beginning. Because because institutions haven't even begun to play. If you saw them really playing, it wouldn't Bitcoin price wouldn't be where it is now. Come on, we know this. It wouldn't be near where the old alt near where the old, old, old all time high is. No, they're holding back for a reason. All right, so now let's move on here. So now, oh, we got a little bit of uh, Solana and Cardano news here. Right. Primarily Solana. I think he gets to, to uh, Cardano at the end. But this is from the Daily Hoddle and it's titled Crypto Analyst Details Contrarian Solana Play Amid Drop and Soul Sentiment. It's the same FUD that's been hitting everything. It's I believe it's a concerted effort. I believe they're driving prices down on things. I believe there's a lot of money behind the scenes that people are getting paid and they will take the money. I know how this game works. I've seen certain things. They will email the people and call them and reach out to them on Twitter and make them a deal and all this type of stuff. People, will, people have done worse for less. And they, 
oh, I don't like this anymore. This crypto here is not good. I don't know about this crypto. And, and their viewers, their listeners, their readers will sell. And it will drive that price down for the institutions who want to buy them. Hey, I could be wrong. Maybe that's not happening. Maybe it's a beautiful world of sunshine and rainbows. It's not filled with sharks and wolves. But I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you my thoughts. So. A lot of FUD has been thrown at projects that are 100 percent, I think, solid projects, bullish into the future. You even hear institutions bullish on them like Quant. Quant continues to work with the Bank of England, continues to work with the Bank of International Settlements. And yet still you'll hear FUD on Quant. <laughs> See, stuff like that. Things that make you go. Hmm. <laughs> Remember that from the 90s? So anyway, let's scroll down here. So this is. um a post uh, or uh, the thoughts of crypto analyst Ali Martinez. Martinez returns. Put some respect on the Martinez name. I'm telling you, Martinez is our tough. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time I think about Martinez, I think about Mr. Martinez, you know, used to teach us uh, Taekwondo. Um, we used to learn everything in that that studio. We, we learned Taekwondo. We learned some judo there, weapons training. But anyway, I just knew. When you come in on that Saturday and you see Mr. Martinez, it's about to be sparring almost the whole time. Like, you know how you come in on some days ready to practice and, and, and you're going over certain forms and techniques and stuff. Not on a Saturday. You better not show up on a Saturday or Sunday. It's time to fight. I'm talking about for real. It's time to fight. Everybody there is, 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 is tough. There's no weak people there. It don't matter who you pick. It's about to be a rumble. You got to you got to get that experience fighting live. You have to. So anyway, when I hear the name Martinez, oh, some memories are coming back. Yeah, I can't remember the, this one. Uh, this one guy's name. Me and this one guy, you know, um, I this just personally how I felt. I felt like I was the best. I know he felt like he was the best. You know, we were hard hard fighters and it was about time to really start dominating tournaments that's how we felt and man yeah we were we were gonna go at it you know we we're gonna go at it nothing to harm each other but like you know how you get that little extra like yeah i'm the dominant here yeah i'm <laughs> i'm gonna put it on you boy like <laughs> you better get ready i don't know how i don't know if i'm conveying this correctly but <laughs> it's hard to describe when you're in that mind state i don't know you know but Anyway, those are the memories that come back whenever I hear the name Martinez. Don't worry. When you get older, you start to everything that you hear, it triggers either a, a, a analytical thought or like a, or a memory. It unlocks a memory. Right. Anyway, let's go here. Martinez says that Solana's consolidation from the yearly high and recent outages on its network have created a low sentiment for soul. It was out there. The, the, that FUD, that low sentiment was out there way before outages when i first got into solana what was it like 15 bucks 16 bucks something like that people were saying it was dead there was no outages there was nothing going on it was being praised by institutions their their leaders were saying that they were going to do all this great stuff and they have done a lot of great stuff um and still people were saying oh no solana is dead sell solana it's been there they want some people want to bring the prices down people got to understand that and they have powerful voices the people listen to them but anyway, that doesn't change anything for me. I'm bullish on Solana. Uh, so anyway, it says late last week, Solana also dealt with some congestion issues, partially stemming from a rush of users looking to speculate on meme coins. Martinez says now may be the time for a contrarian bounce from Sol. Quote, crowd sentiment for Sol hasn't been this low since the Solana network outage on February the 6th. Being contrarian now might just pay off. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> I'm in this long term, buddy. I'm not going anywhere. It's just like the bank coins. I don't play with the bank coins and I'm not going anywhere. I have a vision. I have a pathway. I stay on it. And no man, no external force, no woman is going to change my path. That's not going to happen. Nope, not going to happen. Only thing can change my path is wisdom. Wisdom. That's it. And the wisdom says right now. We stay the course. That's how I feel. I stay the course. I don't betray myself at any time. 
No, there's no one that's going to make me. I smack my. <laughs> Getting a little too aggressive there, Mick. There's no one that can make me betray my own thoughts, betray my own path. That is not going to happen. I have a little bit of honor and I will go out with honor if necessary. It says here at the time of writing, Solana is trading for one hundred and seventy six dollars and ninety two cents. That's a long way from 15, 16, 14 bucks. That's a long that's a long way from there. So even though it's down, it's up. <laughs> it's, it's down, but it's up. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Martinez also has his radar on Cardano. Then I just say this the other day. I don't see how anybody is negative on Cardano. And like I said, I don't have any Cardano. I probably should get some as much as I've been talking about Cardano. I'm just saying, like, I just don't like to see an injustice happen. You know what I mean? Everybody has their own opinions. I can respect that. But this is mine. And I just don't see anything bearish. Did I say bullish before? My apologies. I don't see how anyone's bearish on Cardano. That's what I meant. My apologies. <laughs> I'm, I'm bullish on Cardano, although I hold zero. I probably, Like I said, I probably should get some. Why not? But um, I haven't. This is according to the uh, analyst. There's a lot of things that I'm bullish on that I don't have. You know what I mean? I'm just, I just like to acknowledge what I feel is accurate and true. Like, for example, I don't have right now, I don't have any palladium. No palladium, but I love palladium. I have no copper, but with certain certain catalysts, copper might <laughs> copper might be a little bit bullish. Um, I don't have any copper. Uh, I don't have any Cardano. But I'm bullish on Cardano. Uh, I, I like I have my positions in things that I feel very solid on, and I'm comfortable with what I have right now. You know what I mean? So I don't feel like even though I'm bullish on those, those things, I need to extend my arm to get to acquire them. It says, quote, Cardano is experiencing a lull in whale activity, signaling potential for further ADA price consolidation or an impending drop. All right, let's scroll down here. Let's see if uh, he has anything more to say. It says, looking at Bitcoin, Martinez notes that over $7.5 billion worth of Bitcoin has left wallets linked to crypto exchanges. OK, then it goes like into Bitcoin. Um, but I suppose that he's trying to convey that he's bullish on Cardano. I wish they would have wrote a little bit more on that, that topic there. All right. Suggesting, well, sorry, I had to read that a little bit. <laughs> so for those who are listening, they probably thought the video just cut off. My apologies, folks. This is real and on the spot, you know. This is a slowdown in ADA whale activity is currently suggesting that more consolidation or a potential correction may be on the horizon for the Ethereum rival Cardano. Okay, so yeah, so listen. Now, I won't say he's bullish on Cardano, but he's like staying neutral and just watching, sort of like what I do with a lot of different assets. I just watch for a while to see how they do, but more than just price action, I don't really care about the price action right now. I'm long, with a lot of what I'm doing in crypto, I'm long-term, whatever that means. Take it how you want. I'm long-term with, um, with these plays. I have some short-term plays in a lot of different markets, but no, when it comes to, to uh, crypto, I'm looking for stuff that's super solid. But anyway, um, yeah, I just watch stuff for a while, it, mostly partnerships. I need to know there's some solid partnerships, solid utility going on. So now let's move on here. I want to just put this one out here to show people like where things are going. So now this article says $13 billion institutional inflows and I'm rounding actually if I rounded it up it should be 14 billion institutional inflows at highest ever yearly rate far surpassing 2021 record by coin shares now think about this if all these so-called pros are saying we're at the beginning and there's 13 billion inflows what do you think is going to be in the future it's going to be in unbelievable crypto hasn't begun to blossom as of yet, we're still in a nascent phase. Digital asset manager CoinShare says institutional investment in crypto products last week helped push inflows to their highest ever year to date levels. In the latest digital asset fund report, 
CoinShare says digital asset investment products brought in $646 million in inflows last week. Quote, digital asset investment products say cont uh, saw continued positive sentiment with inflows totaling U.S. $646 million last week. Inflows year to date at U.S. $13.8 billion are at the highest ever level now far surpassing the U.S. $10.6 billion seen in 2021. Now, keep that in mind and also keep in mind that they said there's a lot of institutions that are not in yet that are coming. Where does, the, where does this go? Where does the price of crypto go in the future? You see, the, the future is looking extremely bright, in my humble opinion, across the board, by the way, across the board. I see a lot of winners in the future. So, all right, we're going to leave off there for now. I have like five more articles, but <laughs> we'll get to those another time. All right, let me see. Let me make sure we don't have any gold news because I would definitely jump to some gold news to end off the, the video. Okay, so now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with this. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.